just uh, please start it. Okay. Hello, friends. This is Colum Berg. We are presenting to you a class on condenser water piping design, pump head, and pump collection. This is a disclaimer. You can just skip this. This is about me. I am Arvind Dhawan, subject matter expert, ESSCI, lead trainer, level six ESSCI. I am a faculty at Ishray and content writer for Scholar. I am a mechanical engineer in refinery and conditioning. It is 45 plus years. Domains of my experience, design, installation, service, project management, trainings, and content writings. I have contributed in the following publication and HVAC contents. Handbook for Technicians, Air Conditioning Refinery by Shrey, Multi-Scale Technician Handbook by Care Voltas, Trainers, PPT, FTAC, and App Contents for NSDC, ESSA, under the Ministry of Skills Development and Entrepreneurship Government of India, Revamping and Refurbishment of Course Materials for Shrey, Multimedia Contents on HVAC for Scholar Mode International Private Market. I am your trainer for this one hour. So we shall now move forward. The topic is condenser water piping design and how we size it. What is the objective? The objective of a condenser is to reject heat into the atmosphere. The total heat to be rejected is equal to the heat of the iconic space plus heat of compression. Heat of compression is actually the electrical energy that is converted to mechanical energy required to compress the refrigerant. The pressure enthalpy diagram of the refrigerant is shown below. Now, if you see the diagram here, it's just drawn out for you for the purpose that you see the pointer option. Let me go to the pointer. You see that this is the evaporation. This is the heat content taking place inside the cooling coil. And this is the outer red line show the heat to be rejected in the condenser. It is much more than the heat required to remove in the cooling coil. So we go to the next. In a water-cooled condenser, this heat is transported by water, which is then rejected into the atmosphere by the cooling tower. Generally, MS Schedule 40 pipes are used. So the pipe size of the condenser water is very important for efficient performance of the condenser. So if the pipe sizes are not correct, then what will happen that the machine will not form properly. The size of condenser water pump has to be carefully selected. So besides the pipe, the pump is also a very important factor. This pump has to overcome all the frictional loss of the pipe fittings and valves to ensure that the entire water flow is delivered into the cooling tower. So for the machine to perform properly, one, the pipe size has to be selected properly. Two, the right size of pump must also be selected. Okay, this is just showing you the pump water sucked from here, delivered here into the cooling tower, spread into the cooling tower. Mini animation. Now we go to the next slide. Condenser water piping is an open loop system. Now, what is an open loop system? This means that the water flows into a reservoir which is open to the atmosphere. Means it is not a closed loop. End to end are not closed. One end is connected, the other end opens to the atmosphere that is the sump of the cooling tower. We look at its property. See the animation below, the reservoir is the cooling tower which is open to the atmosphere. Now see, the pump discharges its water through this into the condenser through the condenser, it goes to the cooling tower, it is sprayed from the top and it drops into the bottom sump. Now this is open to the atmosphere. So where you see this violet meshing, it is from here. Just below this, you see a black meshing. It is from here, the air out, atmosphere air comes into the cooling tower, goes through this violet, section, which is the fills, the water in blue is being sprayed from the top, and the air is sucked through this by this fan on the top, right? So the atmosphere comes into the cooling tower and is discarded from the top. 
because it's become an open loop system. The size of condenser water pipe depends upon the following. One, water flow rate. Two, water velocity. The water flow rate is assumed at 3 US UPM per ton as per ARI standards 550 only 590. These are standards based on which air conditioning chillers are manufactured to the specific capacities. They have to conform to these standards. And that is 3 US GPM per ton. The water velocity depends on different size of pipes in the water pipe circuit. There are source uses. One, pump discharge. Second, pump suction. Third, riser. Fourth, header. These are four services that the pipes are used for. Next slide. This is the animation of a typical condenser water pipe inside the plant room. All the fittings are shown. In, just to explain to you in brief, one, let's start from pump. EJ means expansion joint. NRV means non-return valve. VF means butterfly valve. The water comes down this way. Again, we have VF, butterfly valve. EG, pressure gauge. E is thermostat. GV is gate wall. Again, we have EJ expansion joints. So you have noticed that between the pipe and the main equipment, we have an expansion joint. Then after this, again, we have EJ expansion joint, GV again, gate wall, T thermostat, PG pressure gauge, F S float switch, BV balancing valve. PF, butterfly valve, and then this goes to the header and to the cooling tower. This is a typical condenser water piping layout in a plant room. So we'll go to the next slide. Recommended water velocities. We can't have just select any water velocity because if we have low water velocity, we have poor heat rejection. If we have too high water velocity, we have erosion of pipes. So what are the standards? The standards have been laid down by carrier. Whatever in this presentation, whatever images you see, whatever animations you see are exclusively made by scholar. Wherever we are using data, we have specified the source. They are all authentic data with and the sources have been mentioned. So at, at least no room for any ambiguity whatsoever. So you can take it as what is given as correct. The service of the pipe to be used, the pipe, this, which I already mentioned, depends on the velocity. So what are the recommended velocities? Carrier defines that pump discharge water velocity should be 8 to 12 FPS, feet per second. Pump suction, 4 to 7. Drain line, this header this, riser this. So all the various services, right, are defined here. City water now, but what we are more concerned is pump suction and pump discharge so that we can define the main pipe sizes that are required during the erection stage and accordingly the size of pumps. So we go to the next slide. Condenser water pipe size. Now we go to real topic. Pipe friction loss on open piping system is considered for sizing condenser water pipe. As I already mentioned, condenser water piping is an open loop system. Most air conditioning applications use steel pipe schedule 40 in the piping system. The friction loss of condenser water pipes is presented in chart for carrier, post carrier. This chart shows water velocity, pipe diameter, Water quantity in addition to the friction rate per 100 feet of equivalent pipeline. Knowing any two of these factors, the other two can be easily determined from the chart. The effect of inside rough of the pipe is considered for all these values. It means when you select a schedule 40, that means its construction, its roughness inside has all been considered by carrier. The water quantity is determined by the air conditioning load, obviously. We have said three US GPM per ton. How many tons? Accordingly, the water quantity will be decided. Water velocity as per defined recommendation. These two factors are used to establish pipe size and friction rate. 
I'm sure things so far have been uh, very clear to you. Now we go to the next slide. Oh my God, you just see this chart, mind boggling chart, so many lines. So what to do with all this? It looks really confusing. So we will go step by step, make it absolutely simple for you to understand. There'll be no doubt whatsoever. Right now, this is your state, absolutely mind boggling. Well, it's not all that difficult. So let's take with an example. You see, when we're going to work with charts and all, just mentioning the lines and mentioning charts doesn't actually hit the point. To hit the point, we'll go with a specific example. And according to example, the respective lines will be drawn and animated on the slide. Assume a 100 ton system. Okay, let us assume 100 ton system. Assume flow 3S US GPM. We have to take it. That is the standard. Total flow rate becomes how much? 100 multiplied by 3 becomes how much? 300 US GPM. Select water velocity. Now, velocity, if you've seen the recommendation, the water velocity is a band 4 to 7. Now, it's our choice. We can go for 4, we can go 5, we can go 6, we can go 7. But what should you do? Should you go for the highest or the lowest? No. Normally, every plant has a commercial implication. Nothing counts for free. The higher the size, the more the cost. So we try to strike a balance. So in this, we'll keep ourselves within the band, take the highest value for commercial consideration. Okay, so being a commercial person, we cannot, I cannot ignore the commercial side of it. It costs money. Steps one, take a friction loss chart for open loop. Okay, let us take a chart. We have taken this chart, the arrow comes there. Now we are blinking the arrow. Now what we do, we plot GPM line 300 US GPM. Now this is the point on this vertical scale, where it is flow GPM. Here it is 300 GPM. We have, made marked, we have marked that point. There it is marked, okay? Now what we're going to do, we are going to plot the line. Flow is 300 US GPM. This is the line. The horizontal line going from left to right is the water flow rate line. Here we mentioned this is the flow 300 UPS GPM line. Correct? I'm sure there are no doubts in this ink line. Now what we do? We have to now plot the velocity line. These inclined lines are the velocity lines in blue. That blue line, all these lines, the various velocities are shown out here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we have selected that 7 line. Uh, five, six, this is five, the four, the five, the six, and this is eight, and in between we have seven. So we have drawn this line, this vertical line. Okay. This is the velocity seven FTS line, vertical line. Now what we do? We mark the point of intersection. There we have here. You see, this is the intersection taking place. Okay. Crossing each other. There should be a flashing it for you. You know, you can see the intersection line, point of intersection, and now we have circled it. Now you can't miss it. This is the point of intersection of the flow line and the velocity line. Clear, oh yeah? As we clear, now what we do? Now we have to select the pipes. The pipe sizes are given here. Now these are the pipe sizes. This inclined lines from left to right going upwards upward line, left to right. And on this chart, these five cells are written. I've made it in yellow. You can see it, but because you cannot see it right now, because the blue line happens to fall exactly on top of the printed matter. So the five cells are written out here. These horizontal inclined lines moving from left to right, left to right, upwards, going upwards. These are the five sizes. Okay, I repeat again, velocity lines, inclined lines from top to bottom, 
five size lines, upward inclined lines from left to right. Absolutely clear, right? Well confused? Don't worry. Now what I'll do is now draw this line for you. Now, these are the five sides going upwards. Four, five, six, seven, whatever. And the five size comes here as four point two. If you remove this, you can be able to see four point two. Pi size is 4.2. Now, definitely, we cannot have a pi size 4.2. It's not manifest that way. So, we the pi size we will select is 4 inch. So, for the strong suction, we have selected a 4 inch pi. I'm sure you'll have no doubt about this. This is how we have selected the size of the pipe. Now, we go to the next step. Now, we have to select the pump. Sorry. Before that, this is again elaborating the pipe size. This is a 4 inch 2 inch pipe size. Flashing, this is 4.2 inch pipe size. And this is, we have shown the pump discharge. Your pump is drawn for you. The delivery is the discharge, top is the discharge, and low suction is always at the bottom and delivery top. These are centrifugal pumps, okay? Now we go to discharge pipe size. Same thing. We have assumed a 400 ton system, three US JPM, three units. The only change will be the velocity. Recommended velocity, the band from 8 to 12, we have selected 12. So the procedure remains the same. Now, what you could not see there, let me show it to you here. You, you see this? These are the pipe sizes. These are the Pipeline, the thing, pipe sizes, upward incline, left to right. These are all the pipe sizes. You can see it very clearly. Velocity lines, these are from top to bottom, inclined, velocity written out here. Right now, let us plot the floor, floor lines and the same procedure. 300 US GPM point has come, is there. The point, fine. This is the flow line, 300 US GPM flow line. This is the flow line, very okay. No issue. This is the velocity line I mentioned already. You can see it very clearly, right? Now, what we're going to do is, we are going to do is, we're going to mark the point. See, these two lines are going to cross each other. Now we're going to mark this point. There we have got it. Everything is visible in this chart. And now we're going to circle this point. You cannot miss this. This is a point of intersection. Now, as I mentioned, the pipe sizes are from left to right, upward inclined. You can see this pipe sizes to make it more clear. Now you can see, I've colored it in yellow. You can see all the pipe sizes in this chart. Now, what are the Pipe size passing through this. This is the line passing through this chart, to this point of intersection. This is the line passing through the intersection point. What is that size? That is 3.2. Now, you can either go for a three inch pipe or a four inch pipe. I would go for a four inch pipe. Selected pump discharge size is four inch, higher size taken. One, first thing is cost. That is second. We have to accommodate for performance loss because of scaling. We cannot ignore that we have scaling in the condenser water pipes. We normally, what we do during the seasonal, we, we descale the condenser. There are various methods, chemical methods, or mechanical methods, electronic methods. We always scale the, or descale the, or descale the condenser. But have we ever thought that the pipes also have scales? Yes, valves have. You open the valves, you descale the valve. What about the pipes? They too have scaling. No? You cannot ignore that factor. So I would go for a four inch pipe to take care of performance loss in years to come. Now we go to the next slide. Here's this is 3.2 yellow. It is flashing for you. Okay, there it is. The 
pump discharge line is shown here. Here we are. So we have the discharge line. Now we have this. Having selected the pipe sizes, so we for a hundred tier plant, we have selected a pipe size of four inch discharge and four inch suction. Right. Now we have to calculate the size of the pump. What pump would be required? What should be its kilowatt rating so that it can deliver the water through the system, overcome all the friction losses, right? And remove the required heat. Pump head is the measurement of the pressure required to deliver the water where required at the desired flow rate. Where it is required to be delivered? To the condenser and right up to the cooling tower, wherever it may be placed. It may be at the ground level, it may be at the terrace. We don't know. So we must see what our site is, where we are actually installing it. That location must be predetermined. So there are two basic factors to determine the pump head. One, lift at this elevation, here is the plant room, here is the cooling tower. What is this lift and elevation? This has to be predetermined before you select the pump. Second, friction loss in pipes, valves, fitting, shell and tube condenser, and cooling tower. All these elements are going to resist the flow of water. Every motion has an opposition. Every motion. No matter it's electricity, no matter it is water, if water is going to flow, if electric flow, we are going to have opposition. And this opposition in case of water system is called friction loss. In case of electrical system, it's called resistance. Okay, that is the basic fundamental of science. Any flow will have opposition. So lift is the elevation difference from the condenser pump location to the cooling tower water delivery nozzle right up to this point. So we go to the next slide. Pump head calculations. Okay. Now we have determined that we are going to go for a four inch pipe. It's my choice. I've decided. And this is how I want to go about it. And these are the specific reasons for going about it. Now, from the point of interesting pipe size, GM plot a vertical line down. Okay. We had plotted the point of intersection for the four inch pipe. That was the point of intersection. Already predetermined the previous charts. So, a four inch size for suction, four inch size discharge. So, we take any chart with the draw the line four inch in the year point of no, draw a vertical line down. Okay, here are the friction losses given. Okay, you can see all this. These are friction losses given. So what we are going to do? That point of intersection we've already found out. Not a problem. So what is the vertical line going down? Ah, here it is. This is the point. This is the friction loss of. Did the friction loss? It is seven point three feet. It is seven point three feet for every 100 feet of physical pipe measurement. So if your total pipe measurement is 100 feet, then the friction loss is 7.3 feet. That means you need a head of 7.3 feet for every 100 feet of four inch pipe, correct? So obviously if, you want, if it's going to measure, give us the, head of friction loss for every 100 feet of pipe. That means we have to have the drawing. We have to have the detailed measurements. I will go later and explain that to you. Now, friction loss through valves and fittings. Pipes, friction loss, done. Not an issue. But what about valves and fittings? There are carrier charts, table 10 and table 11 available. For pressure drops through equipments, for example, no equipments. Carrier will not give you for shell and tube condenser and cooling tub equipments. This 
the manufacturer will have to give you. You will have to call up the manufacturer. He will tell you that my equipment has so much friction loss. Okay. Refer to manufacturer data. We, through our experience, have found out generally you can take this as a figure to measure it, right? Gallon tube condensers you can take as three meters average because it depends upon the size of the condenser, right? A hundred ton and a four hundred ton, a thousand ton. It all depends on the size of the condenser, how much friction loss. But we have assumed you can take an average of three meters for about hundred ton machine. Okay, two meters for cooling tower, right? But to be on the right side, you have to contact the manufacturer depending on the size of your system. This is table 10 carrier, right? All the fittings are measured for, for I have a four inch pipe. So four inch pipe, uh, this thing, pipe size, the pipe size. And these are the various fittings where all these pressure losses are written out here. So I have cir encircled it in red. These are for, these are the pressure loss equivalent to feet of pipe. That means, let's take this example, four inch pipe. This is a glow wall. One glow wall will give 120 feet of pressure loss, right? Equivalent feet of pressure loss. Okay. Then we come to bends. You can see the bends out here. Now, for butterfly valves, I've taken out some data from the manufacturer and given you for butterfly valves. Carrier does not give you for butterfly valves. So I've taken some this year. Now I've made the drawing. Okay. Typical condenser water drawing with four inch pipe size. What I've done is I've measured the discharge separate and the suction separate. Right. Since I've taken four inch, you may not like to agree with me. Say no, I'll go as the rules. I will go for three inch and go for three inch. So I made separate measurements that give you flexibility to work them out separately. So discharge pipe, I have worked out to be 11 meters. All these measurements are in meters, okay? Suction, seven meters. So many long bends, so many short bends. So I measured in feet, converted in meters out here. So it's easy for me to write three meters rather than writing the figure in feet. So then, then the drawing does not become legible. All these have been taken in feet, converted to meters for the purpose of this drawing purpose to make it small so that you can see it. The measurements are in meters and a hand written in blue. Okay, now we go to the next slide. Again, I've shown you the typical installation. No. Pump head calculation. Discharge side or high pressure side loss in equivalent feet of pipe, okay? Size this much, this much is taken, this, this much, this, this much, this, this much, everything is taken right, 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 okay? 296, 296, friction of 7.3, and 7.3 equals 22 feet equal to seven meters. Those marked asterisks are to be got from the manufacturer. Now, now you will be wondering what is this and what is this? This is the quantity length of the pipe and this is the equivalent length in feet. I think there's a mistake out there. This should have been 36 out here also. 36, 36. Here we have pump head, suction side, 23, 23, wire this much, butterfly was this much, long bend this much, this much, total is four meters. Now we come to summary. What the summary says? Total pump head in meters. Discharge seven, suction four, condenser loss is three. As defined, we have assumed that three, but you have to mark the star. Cooling tower 2, total 16, 
at 10 percent safety factor that makes it 18 meters okay now we come to selection of pumps i worked on meters because i have a chart of make kiloscar pumps right centrifugal pumps okay it's in meters so i made my calculation in meters and here we are what we what we had got that 18 meters so this is the discharge in liters per second 18 liters right and what is the flow rate out we are getting 22.2 this pump this model of pump right 5.5 kilowatt this is the flow rate right at this head at 18 meter head it gives a flow rate of 22.2 the same pump at 20 meter head the flow becomes less 20.1 17.5 so you have a range so if the head increases you can use the same pump okay if it falls the limits now for example now use the following data to for the selection of a flow rate is 300 us gpm 300 multiplied by converted to lps this is lps okay 18.9 that pump was giving me 22.2 good enough that is 18 meters it's an 18 meters kilowatt is 5.5 so condenser water pump we can use a 5.5 kilowatt pump, right, which will meet our head requirements, 18 meters, will give more than the required flow rate, 18. I have to take it slightly more because after some time, there'll be scaling in the walls, scaling in the colors, that it'll not give you 20 over 2 all the time. It'll definitely going to reduce a period of time. So it is marginally above that, not an issue. And this is a three-phase pump, and this is the specification of this pump that we have selected, kiloscar KDS A22. So that, that here we mentioned, this is this thing, that comes there, this is this thing, that comes there. So we have now completed how we size the pumps, how we size the pipes for a condenser water. So that concludes our session for we can now take your question and answer. Dheeraji. Well, I'll take the questions one by one. Oh, yes, sir. Participants. Uh, one of the participants, okay, parallelly, I was reply, replying also. Okay, sir. Uh, for the various uh, uh, queries they had. But I will take the questions one by one for the other people to understand what was the question. Correct, sir. Correct, sir. Uh, first question was of Mr. Kasim. And his question was, what is on the x-axis? Pardon? X-axis. Huh? X-axis. That is friction loss feed for of water per 100 feet. Yeah. So I think, sir, if you can elaborate a bit on that, that what does it mean of the friction loss of feet per 100 feet? I think he will get the answer, I guess. Okay, sir. You, you see, let us say if you have a pipe, how much opposition this pipe is going to give? Right? For example, if you're electrical, you know that electrical subject, if you have a wire and you have current flowing through it, how much opposition this guy will give the current? That is the resistance is given in ohms. It has a unit ohms, right? Similarly, a pipe is going to resist the flow of water. Now, this resistance in this water system is given in feet of pipe. Feet. Okay. If you have now, if you have to have a unit for this, what is the unit? The unit is for every hundred feet this pipe will give a resistance of 7.3 feet. Means for every 100 feet, there'll be a head loss of 7.3 feet, right? For example, in electrical terminology, ohm. Now, if you have 220 volt supply going through a specific resistance of so much ohm, then you'll say 
220 ohm supply after the resistance the, there the voltage drop and it comes to 200 volts or 190 means the resistance will result in the output right which is less than the input similarly now if i am going to water going to flow through it's going to pose what will the unit be unit will be in feet for every 100 feet with my 100 feet of pipe will give 7.3 friction loss. That means if I have a 50 feet of pipe, it will give 3 point something loss. Okay. Now you measure your pipe. If you have a pipe of 50 meters or 50 feet, then it's going to be 7 point through something. If you have 100 feet, so accordingly, you have to take the feet and then convert it into how much exactly the requirement is. Yeah. In short, it is nothing. Mr. Kalsim is nothing but a resistance the pipe is offering your velocity with respect to your sizes, what you're selected. That is coming in the x-axis. And that is very helpful by selecting your pump head. I'll take the second question here of uh, Mr. Harish is asking why different velocity for suction and discharge. So I think uh, please uh, take this carrier uh, selection chart of the velocities. I think we have missed, he might have joined late. Yes, yes, you must have joined it. You see, all this data are authentic data from authentic sources. I have carriers given this data, right? They have done then respective research and given us this data for use. Yeah, I think, sir, here I wish to add one point. I think some of them are mis uh, misconfusing with carrier as an equipment and carrier as a handbook. Many people okay. think that this is an equipment data. I wish to tell them that this is not an equipment data we are referring, but this is carrier has given a handbooks. And in that particular handbook for the benefit of engineers, they are given these tables. And these are the carrier tables which you are presenting it to you. Yes. In similar way, you can all you can refer the client specification when you receive the tender document also. In whatever standard clients ask you to follow, that you need to follow. Suppose they ask you to follow the ASHRA, you pick up the ASHRA table. Suppose if they ask you to follow the ASHRA, you pick up the ASHRA table. Suppose both are not there and carrier is mentioned, you pick up the carrier handbook and you may not take the velocity as per that. So it is up to, it is not mandatory, you have to ask for this table only. It is as per the other specification which client gives. I, I mentioned here source carrier handbook again, system design table 13, page 321. So, Wherever you pick up the source, you should mention it. If it's Ashray, mention Ashray. If it's Ashray, mention Ashray. This is where we have taken this basis. Okay. So these are the basis of the values which are mentioned in carrier handbook. These values may or may not vary in other standards, but more or less they will be same. In the handbook, they say that the discharge has to be selected between 8 to 12 feet of per second range. Um, suction has to be taken 4 by 4 by 7 feet of range. That's why these two are different values are there, Mr. Harish. This is not our value we have selected. This is given in carrier handbook. And to give a logic of that, why two values could be there, you might be designing, you might be design, you might you might have designed the air conditioning system. If you see the return air value is always less than supply value. Yes, sir. Very correct. Very correct. It's always supply, less than supply. Why that velocity is less? Same logic goes up and you're more or less. So, um, okay. So I will take a next question, sir. If we take uh, one question, one uh, question is there, uh, Mr. Azad Haider, if we take maximum velocity as per table, then I get lower pipe dia, but we assume moderate velocity, then dia will increase. So which velocity you we choose from the design? The answer is very, very simple, Mr. Haider. You, first of all, your entire project budget is balanced between technical and commercial. So you need to strike a balance between technical and commercial. Your boss will be scolding if you select a higher access because your cost is going to go high. 
But in the same way, if you select the lower prices, your pressure drop will be high. So that iteration that you need to do technically before you select the price says that what is going to cost higher and what is going to cost low. Iraji, this uh, particular example, right? Difference between three inch and four inch pipe, we have worked at comfort with about 385 rupees per ton. Uh, okay, sir, that slide will come afterwards. Let us take some questions. Mr. Atul is asking that in the diagram, there's a gate wall and there's a butterfly wall. Uh, can you please check whether we have indicated both? Because if he's saying that, what is the need of both? So I just wish to see that whether we have mentioned both or only single. Okay, let me go to the drawing, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yes. You see this gate wall, you see this is a gate wall for connecting your uh, instruments or whatever you want to connect. Suppose you want to connect something out here. You want to connect something out here or you want to drain the water from here. It's a gate wall, right? This, 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 you have. this particular gate wall has been used for the drain, training purpose. Really, now, for example, if you want to descale the system, right? Then you have to drain the water out. Yeah. This this, gate, I guess, Mr. Uh, I guess you're talking about this particular gate wall. Hmm. If I'm not mistaken, please tell us. This particular gate wall is, if you see, it is not in series. It is in parallel, in fact. It is vertically or uh, installed. It is not it is, in it, it, it is not in the water circuit. It's, a, it's an accessory. This is not the water circuit, it's provided to drain the system. These valves, what you see, this valve is the circuit. This valve, the water, you, just, you see the orange. Wherever the orange crosses the valve, that valve is going to pose. You have BV, balancing valve, butterfly valve. Blue line, you have a butterfly valve. All these other are accessories which do not come in the water circuit, but they are provided. You need a force flow switch, it has no opposition. You need a pressure gauge. Now, these are not connected to the pipe. They have, you, you get to solve. He got the answer, he got the answer. He okay, fine, he got fine. The okay, sir. So I'll take next question. Uh, one question from Mr. Praveen. Uh, sir, how to avoid noise issues in piping? If we are going by the comfort point of view, uh, how it will affect the comfort? So I think if uh, you are going by the noise issues, only way to avoid noise issues is not to exceed the velocity specified in the standard. If you are meeting the velocities in the standard, noise issues will not become because all these standards, all these recommended velocities, the um, standards that they have, whether it is carrier, uh, handbook, or it may take the ishray, ashray, whichever you take, these recommended band of velocities are considered. Keeping in mind this water hammer issues from which the noise may get generated. So you may not encounter these issues even if you are going or if you are keeping strictly within the band of the recommended velocities. Okay, Mr. Praveen got the reply that it's clear from his side. He got yes, that. Next question, sir. Uh, one Mr. Zahir is asking why carrier uh, uh, what is the reason of selection of different velocity? Could you please explain the reason for this selection by carrier? Why carrier has given these two different velocities for suction and discharge? I think I think I've answered this before that the giving the example of the supply and return here. Let us take two more questions. Okay, one 
what will be the preferred way of this uh, this is very install interesting question you will be better uh, uh, answer this Tell me, sir. Huh? Tell me, sir. it's installation point of view and okay, i really sir. like this guy mr suyash the we had asked the question he is very much concerned about the installation part of it uh, how to install it designing is one thing and installation part is very important so question right. is goes like this so, what, so, is, what is the preferred way of installing the strainer okay, okay. horizontal or vertical so, so we have a complete separate subject on installation in, in our courses but for this gentleman i can tell you in the plant room right let's imagine you inside a plant room all the pipes are ceiling suspended right so the headers ceiling is suspended and they're suspended on angle through suspension rods right they're fixed to the ceiling through dash fastener and below the pipe we put a u block that isolates the vibrations of pipe from the building the wooden block in u shape the side of the pipe the pipe sits in the block the block sits on the angle and the angle is suspended from the ceiling all these pipes are ceiling suspended right this by the ceiling suspended in in a complete course we have complete installation showing complete how it is done exactly how the angle is set even animation is there how the dash fastener goes how you first drill a hole you have a drill machine going drilling a hole in the ceiling then you have dash fastener going to the ceiling followed by a full threaded rod goes inside then we fix one end of the angle right with nut then we fix the other end of the thing and we put the wooden block and then lay the pipe on top of the wooden block so this question was uh, whether to install which is a preferred way horizontal or vertical and then get it sir this question was if we are installing a strainer in the pipeline ha huh. okay particular strainer Trainers are always in the vertical line, sir. If you are using a Y strainer, now this is a very good question. You look at this Y Y strainer. Let's take a look, gentlemen. Who has asked the question? This is Y shape. Look carefully. This tapers on the right hand side. Why is this taper there? There is a flange out here. Inside this taper, there is a net. So any particle comes down here, will go into this net. and the water will flow down okay so this has to be tapered down because when to take out the muck whatever the particles are set in the net you have to open this the moment you open this then this will come out downwards so all this will come downwards this has to be in the vertical line the y facing downwards not upwards okay it has to be in the vertical line guys tell us that is the best way to do it you have put in horizontal line fine but in the plant room it's always in the vertical line even if in the horizontal line the y form y shape will face downwards horizontally it face like this vertically and if it's horizontally it will be facing the floor right any doubt on that Then I'll draw it for you. Just give me time. Here, here, this is that. I'm drawing this for you, right? There's a there's a net basket. There's a basket inside, right? Answer, uh, Mr. Suresh. Mr. Suresh got the answer. He has uh, replied that he has got the flange. Yeah. Uh, sir, I'll take the next question. Uh, Mr. Samir, he has asked one very interesting question. Mm -hmm. Why are uh, why we are using the pump suction line uh, eccentric reducer and the discharge line concentric reducer? I I didn't get it, sir. Yeah, if yeah, I got his question. What is trying to say? Okay, at the site. Uh, we might have seen that uh, 
Um, I uh, I forgot his name. I just pick up what is his name. I'm sorry. Samir. Yeah, Mr. Samir, your yeah, question is right. If you see the site, there's an eccentric reducer and concentric reducer being fit at the pump and stop pump suction and discharge line. The reason is being simple. Yeah. Carlo, Carlo. The reason is being simple. Uh, here, when the pump water enters from the suction side, it has to be the, the, the entry into the pump suction has to be smooth and it should avoid air bubble in pockets. So that's the reason it's the water entry too should be smooth uh, and uh, it, it should not create any uh, air bubble pocket due to the entry. Because if you see the pump is running very fast, just trying to suck the water, the it is, water is trying to enter inside the impeller. At that particular point, there's a lot of action happening. So if there's a lot of action happening between water pump and water, so there could be chances of water bubble getting generated, air pockets, being created, so that's a reason. That's a, that's a reason being for the smooth entry of the water. This concentric is this a concentric and outside also. If you see that eccentric reducer because the smooth exit of the water. That's a reason to avoid any kind of a bubble formation and damage to the inside pipe due to bubble bursting. Second question is also uh, he's asking. One of his ongoing HVAC site consultant has installed discharge line DRV. Why? That line? Double regulating wall at the discharge. So, no. yeah, at the pump discharge. I guess it's a pump discharge he's talking about. I think it's strange, you know, why he has installed, what is the need? Okay, what is install, installed? What's in the discharge line? The double regulating wall, that is balancing wall. The balancing wall is all, always after the equipment. That is fine, sir, but I uh, didn't understand why it's installed after the pumps. So, so why it is after the equipment? Because balancing wall offers a lot of pressure drop. It This wall has a maximum pressure drop. So we want the water to go with minimum pressure drop into the equipment. And after that, let the pressure drop take place. So this particular uh, question is very valid because nowadays consultants are becoming too cautious about measuring the velocity uh, water quantity uh, after the equipment, after the pump, after the chiller, after the uh, after the AHU. So he might have installed with the noble intention of checking the water velocity, uh, water quantity, or. GPM after the pump, but same yeah. GPM is going to go after the get after the uh, at, uh, at the outside of children also. Same GPM is going to get after the totaling of the entire HUs or HUs also. So I, I really can't comment why he has installed that he better know what is the reason. So once once you have balanced the water quantity, that will be the same throughout the entire system. Exactly. So, so back to it. what is the reason? So only your Mr. Samir, I'm sorry, only he can answer why he has done this. But according to me, it's not required. Desperately, it's not required. It's a luxury if he's adding it. But there are ways by which it can be avoided. If it's an additional, that means you're increasing the pump head kilowatt of energy conversion increase. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ahita Gnik. I'm sorry, I am not cannot pronounce his name properly. It could be a different name, but I will take this question. Uh, strainer should be, he's saying that strainer, strainer angle should be in direction of flow of discharge, dust and mud. Yeah, he's right. Yes. Tushar Shinde has also given a specific answer about the eccentric concentric. In other words, a cavitation in pump. Yes. Uh, to be avoided, to avoid the cavitation in the pump. Correct, correct, sir. Right, sir. And, uh, okay. When Mr. Babu has asked one question, how much, how much distance between the values to be maintained? Values? I think he might be saying about the walls, if I'm not mistaken. And it could be typographical error resulted into the values. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So it all, it, this is also mentioned in various standards, carrier standards, or it is also mentioned in the ASHRAE standards. It's up to 
1.5 to 2D, that is diameter of pipe. If you have a two inch diameter, it could be 2D to 1.5D. And these distance, distances are specified in various standards. So if you refer the standards, you will get the answer. Or in the standard general installation practices also it is mentioned. That is four times or two times the diameter of the pipe, that much distance we need to keep between the walls. But of course, distance is needed between the walls. So I'll take a few more questions. May I get the recording of this section? Uh, sorry, Mr. Bai. Bahai ki, I'm sorry, I could not pronounce your name. But sorry, uh, this particular session was only a live session. A recording is not available. This particular recording, if you wish, we are going to add it in our detailed course of HVAC, which we already prepared, that is certified MEP professional course is already available on our platform. There we will be adding this uh, particular recordings along with the animations. So you can purchase that course and you can have a complete course for that. Okay. How much, how much consider noise criteria for Water cool chillers. Uh, noise, noise uh, yeah, this is a question for Maran, Mr. Prakash. Okay, Mr. M. Prakash. The question is that how much to consider noise level for water cool chillers? Uh, okay, this particular session is only for uh, pump sizing, pipe sizing, like that. For water cooled chiller, um, uh, I guess you're talking about the chiller noise criteria, right? So this you will get only for the manufacturer's catalog. I think they will surely help you in that. But one thing is there, since it's a water cool chiller, the noise will be definitely much, much lesser than the air cool chiller, where you have the fans and all, so noise level goes to very high. Air cool chiller always installed outdoors. The noise is outdoors. Huge, yeah. Here, the only compressor noise is going to get... Only the compressor noise is going to come into the water cool chiller. Yeah, and adjacent pumps and all that is. Yes, oh, yeah. pumps do also make a noise. Sir, one question from Anonymous. He's hmm. asking why bullhead connection is not preferred uh, for more than, for why the bullhead connection is not preferred for more than one pump for pump discharge oblique suction header. Could you answer this? Because I really could not get the I don't know what is the thing. We, we just put, uh, there's an expansion joint, right? To isolate the equipment from the rest of piping so that vibration do not transfer. So I think this particular person is trying, asking about the header at the, con the connections at header. But I really, because I might be calling bullet connection with a different name. So I did not if you could draw the bullet connection, then I can answer this question. This is how we do the connection. This is how we do the connection out here. Because this question is for the uh, connection of a pump uh, pump discharge with the header. Pump discharge the header. You what you do? They, they make a hole, welding hole, and they weld a long bit. It's a long bit. Yeah, long bit. Yeah. Long bit. Water can travel smoothly. Yes, it can smoothly. Head. The standard is a long bit. You take the same size long bit, and and you, they, they cut open with a welding rod, they cut open the hole, put the long wind, and then they weld it. Uh, Mr. Vikram is asking, is 7 GPM at suction and 12 GPM discharge is standard for all condenser pump or is that a thumb rule? No, it's, it's as again, I think you have missed the earlier Mr. session. session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have given the water velocities there. Uh, from the carrier selection chart. So from that, we have selected it. It's not a thumb rule. Uh, we also suggest never take a thumb rule. Go and leave as per the standard. Thumb rules are only to check 
is not to design. Is ben, uh, one Mr. Anonymous has asked, is Beno similar to expansion, expansion joint? Yes. Yes, it is what similar. Is uh, this is expand uh, these joints are between the pipe and the equipment. Yes, yes. We are, the, is the panel similar to the expansion joints? Yeah, it is expansion joints, a rubber joint. It says rub, normally are near rubber joints, rubber bellows, you can say. Rubber bellows, yes. We are bellows nowadays. Yeah. So when you have to dismantle the pump, you know, suppose you have to dismantle the head, so when you dismantle the bystander, then you can just lift the pipe, the bellow will collapse, and you can take out whatever you want. One well, Mr. Ahit Agnik has asked one question. While designing the system, what sort of data we have to ask to client for pipe sizing? Uh, well, uh, first and foremost, uh, let, uh, what you need to, pipe sizing is all the game of what tonnage you are arriving. Okay. Once you arrive at tonnage, you have a temperature difference, seven and 12 in standard one. And in the chill water also, and the condenser water is five to six degree delta T. So what you need to see here is, you don't have to ask anything to client while checking the pipe, pipe designing and pipe sizing. Okay, client, if you have all the data and you already arrived at the tonnage, and I think you have all the data which is required to calculate the tonnage, that's enough to calculate the pipe size. The tonnage determines the quantity of water, sir. Yes, and quantity and, and pipe size is determined by the quantity of water. Quantity yes, so, of water, simple. So it's all A, B, C. I hope you answer my answer my question. If you have anything, you can still ask if I'm not very clear. Mm. Uh, one Prakash has asked, thumb rules, it's available to primary variable pumps. Some projects, it's go primary variable instead of primary pumps and secondary pumps. I did not get this question. I'm very sorry uh, what it means. The pump selection remains the same. Primary pumps, whatever the circuit is, I will take that head only. Primary is local circulation. That's for chilled water, so not for condensing water. Uh, Mr. Varun has asked, is there any ideal temperature difference should we maintain between water inlet and outlet of the uh, Condenser five degree delta T, five to six degree delta T are the comfort application chillers are being designed for. So five to six degree delta T uh, you need to maintain, but better to check with the manufacturer again if they have any more clearances for the comfort applications. For the processes, it could be in 10, but for the comfort applications, five to six degree delta T is okay. Five to six degrees Celsius. So it's about uh, nine to 10 degree Fahrenheit. Any more questions, sir? I'm just checking, sir. Come in by one by one. Uh, Mr. Mr. Azhar, I don't appreciate it, uh, sir. Great, great session. Thanks a lot of enhancement in my knowledge. We'll meet tomorrow's session, surely. Thank you very much. Thank you. I request all of you to be in time so that they should not miss anything because recordings are not available for the uh, this session. It will be added directly to the paid course. Uh, the, the students who have already taken the paid course, they will already get it free of cost. So I will take a few more questions.
do we have to ask for building architecture and structural drawings uh, while uh, designing uh, the HVAC system, I guess. The question is, Mr. Ahit Agnik is asking. Uh, if you get the building architecture, structural drawings, there's nothing like it. If a client gives, that will give you a clear indication of the room sizes, height of the room. So it will help you uh, to design and uh, the calculate the heat load calculations properly. You can ask, and if client gives, nothing like that. So for the chillers and pumps, no, the manufacturer will give the foundation, foundation details. Yeah, that is a different uh, aspect. He's asking if uh, the building architecture structure drawings are needed. It is needed for the heat load, and heat load is needed for the tonnage, and tonnage is needed for the water quantity, and water quantity is needed for the pipe size. This is the whole new tools. So I will add, every building has architectural drawings. Every building has architectural drawings before it's constructed. So the drawings are available to everybody. Yeah, and without that drawing, we cannot... You cannot calculate the heat load. Don't know the window sizes. You don't know the locations. How will you do it? So in, in our sub heat load calculation, our very first slide says, refer to architectural drawings. And we've given a sketch of that. You must know the orientation, building orientation, the architectural drawings, only then you can proceed. Yes. Sir, Mr. Pa Praveen has appreciated. He has attended our earlier sessions also. Mm -hmm. And it was a great experience for him. And we Thank teach you. a lot of practical things. And it has helped uh, them immensely. Thank you, Mr. Praveen. The appreciation from you means a lot to us. It motivates us to do better. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, one more question, Krishna Babu. Pipe class we follow schedule 40 only. Mostly there is a other schedule also we are following. You can follow, but again, we say it's a it's a game of all commercials. How you can keep your boss happy? It's all game about if your schedule 40 is meeting the requirement of the pressure inside the pipe, then our question is that why you need to go for the other schedules? You can ask this. We are all engineers, we can all just ask this question to ourselves. If a particular thing, by doing value engineering, if we can keep the same pipe size of Schedule 40 or using it, why to go for Schedule 80? So this carrier data is time tested yes. over 100 of years, sir. Yes. So time -tested. Different, if we can go to client, if we can go to consultant, if we can ask the same question, sir, why you are asking for other schedules? Can you prove that this Schedule 40 is not enough? You can always win the commercial game in front of your boss's eyes. This is all we want. We are engineers. We have to ask the question to ourselves. Why we need to go for Schedule 80? If you feel that the pipe pressure inside the, is too much to handle for Schedule 40, go for Schedule 80. But if it is not, then we have to go for it. Just because other people are doing, we are not supposed to do it. We are engineers, so we should ask the question to ourselves. That makes us different than others. I hope I answered, answered your question. We should always question ourselves. Question the methodology. Question everything that why, why, why? Can I come one size less? Can you prove by calculation to your boss that one size less is enough to save the money? You will be star in your company. Mr. Varnas raise his hand, sir. Just look at it. Yes, sir. A lot of questions, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll take, sir. Yeah, the I think has got done, sir. Sir, Mr. Vikram has asked my question. What is the reason if what is the reason if suction expansion below is compressed while running the pump? Uh, Mr. Vikram, I'm curious to know why you wish to compress it while running the pump. Miss, why what is making you curious to go and compress that particular thing when the pump is running? I, I'm sorry, I could not uh, get this question. You can always email and ask a detailed question to us. You can mail us, sir. Can they not mail us? Can you, email, sir, can you type our email ID of support at the top sbgblb.com so people can note, take a note of it? What do you type it? How do I do that? Oh, yeah, you can uh, mention, sir. You can go to our site and then we can. Uh, 
we can answer them in detail so i type it okay Can ask us question if you have anything more on this session. I'll just take a couple of questions more, sir. Then we will close off because anyway, uh, the session will automatically uh, expire. Another four minutes, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. If we select less capacity of chiller, how we will identify is factor? Mr. Huawei, uh, 30 light. Uh, I could not get this question. This sounds interesting question, but I would like to have a clear cut uh, question. Mr. Pravetti has also one last one question regarding the sound, but that is also in capital letter. But I really could not uh, figure out what he means to say. I'm sorry, Mr. Praveen, I could not get it. One Mr. OAC Sheikh has asked one question. Is there any restriction on number of elbows? Uh, the best thing is to minimize the number of elbows. That is true as far as possible and compared to the plant layout. More you keep the elbows, more you're increasing the pressure drop, more you're increasing the head, more you're increasing the electric consumption, all put together. So they, we cannot say they, only five elbows you should put, six elbows you should put, because psych, you may encounter various kind of challenges. So you need to be ready and prepared for that. But all we can say is it's as per site condition, and there's no law or standard that you have to keep only five elbows or six elbows like that. There's no restriction on number of elbows. But lesser you keep, less better, better you plan, good it is for the designs of the system. Mm. One second, sir. So we have just two minutes. Can we then respond by mail to them? Yes, sir. I think we should stop and we'll answer the questions afterwards as per the email. You can just give a vote of thanks to all and we can just uh, cover it up. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for showing so much interest, asking so many questions. It will enlighten us. We are also learning. There's no age for learning. And we will try to revert back to all your questions as soon as possible. Right, Neeraji? Yes, yes. I really uh, am overwhelmed by the participants question, curiosity to learn. And this is a lot of things we can also learn at this age from you also guys. So uh, keep us energetic, keep us young, ask us questions. We are ready to share our knowledge to you guys, make maximum use of it. Utilize our platform, which we have beautifully created for you with all the animations, with all kind of MEP requirements covered. More is going to come. So take the advantage of our platform, whichever and maximum way you can. Stay connected with us for the updates and we are there to help you. Yeah, what up, uh, many thanks, sir. Uh, and thank you, Dhawan, sir, for giving your time. And it was, it was indeed a great session and your animations particularly was bang on, very useful and very helpful to understand. Thank you, sir. I try to make engineering simple and that animation is only way out. Animation is the only way, yes. Animation is the only way so, to make so, so many complex lines and figures, there's no way except animations. Yeah, all you guys we are meeting tomorrow again. So be there on time, so you should not miss anything. Okay, gentlemen, thank you once again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dhan, sir, for making this uh, Boring topic, very simple, by means of animations. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.